Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. X-Men Mutant Massacre is a massive X-Men event, and in fact, the first X-Men event oh. in continuity. So what? let's talk about it. This came out in 1986, a formative year for comics, and Marvel normally was like, Dark Knight who? Watch what? <laughs> Crisis on Infinite, huh? Well, it's issue to issue. Why do we care about who these cares? long stories? We're, 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 you guys go ahead and make your art. We're making money. But in the meantime, they were also making these X-Men books and they were like, eh, something got into them. Like something was in the water. <laughs> was it like soap operas? Uh, yeah, naturally. It was all, that's all Marvel was. Uh, and of course, Marvel had been riding high in 84 after Secret Wars, which was of course, not their first, but certainly their most successful massive event in right. continuity. And so, you know, they were very happy to just rest on their laurels and make money. But of course, their creatives, the people in their bullpen who were just making art were like, uh, I keep looking over the fence and seeing like real stuff being made <laughs> outside of them making art. They are pushing the envelope and trying new things within the confines of the Marvel structure and of course the Comics Code Authority. Mm. There were three premier X titles at the time, New Mutants, X Factor, and of course, Uncanny X-Men. The New Mutants we don't have to talk about. <laughs> they don't really okay. play much of a role in the story outside no. of they are in it technically. Is this a continual story in one book or does it span all of them? It has no core book. It spans all of them. It's the first X-Men inter-title crossover. Mm. Okay. So it is the first time that we're seeing those titles coalesce into one unified story, which is kind of neat. And of course will be the template for X-Men from here on out. Of course, before we jump into the massacre, we gotta talk about who made this massacre, and that is Chris Claremont, Louis Simonson, Walter Simonson, and Nana Senti. I like the fact that you preface it. Let's talk about who made this massacre. Yeah, who massacred the X-Men? Oh my God. Uh, with art by John Amita Jr., Terry Shoemaker, Brett Blevins, Walter Simonson, Jackson Geis, Sal Bashema, John Bogdanov, Rick Leonardi, Alan Davis, and Barry Windsor Smith. Jesus. Oof. Yeah, it actually kind of seamlessly blends together yeah, because be, this was an era where they were just titles. trying to make it look all the same, yes, right? Yes, be like, sure, to establish your own identity, but also it has to fit the style, the house style. Yeah. Uh, but they are breaking out, and it is expanding. Like, you'll see, I mean, the Barry Windsor Smith book is like uh, night and day. But then again, so is the Alan Davis. For me, I'm like, ooh, Alan Davis, only one chapter, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also a lot of firsts. This is exciting because it's like, oh, wow, really? That's the first time? 86? Feels like that was... Long established. No? I mean, except for the fact that 86 was like 40 years ago, so, yeah? Yeah, I guess it's been long established technically looking back on it. Yeah, but like, when you think about things that happen that matter in comics, 86 hasn't seen that long ago. No, but <laughs> X-Men started in what, the 60s? Yeah. yeah. So it's already been more history at this point yes. than it, they had history up until that point. That's fair to say. What is the massacre? What's going on? Well. It's the Morlocks. Of course, the Wait, Morlocks. We're massacring familiar. the Morlocks. We're massacring the Morlocks. Okay, oh. good. The mutant massacre is the Morlocks. The Morlocks are mutants. They are mutants. Yes. Okay. I I forget. Can you f remind me Absolutely. of the Morlocks? No, the Morlocks are mutants that are also gross looking. Yeah, and they're headed by Mole Man. No, those <laughs> are Moloids. Wait, the, <laughs> Mor the Morlocks and the Moloids yeah. and they're different? They're yeah, different, they yeah. The different. Moloids are a race of beings that the Mole Man has manipulated and co-opted under the Earth's surface. The Morlocks are just mutants that are not attractive enough to join the X-Men <laughs> or live above ground. And they're named after, of course, the indigenous race of right. creatures from H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Right. right. But, but the, like, the Morlocks are- They all live underground though. Yeah. They, like, do, they do live underground, but only because they do in that book. Yes. And the Moloids, I assume, already existed. The so. Moloids are, in, are a creature. Like they, yeah. they're, a, they're an other species. Like an oh idiot. man, I've had so, this wrong the entire time. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, the Morlocks yeah. are just They're people. just redundant. Well, yes. They're so, gross. They're just, and they are gross. Now what's too bad is that we don't bridge the gap, on this couch at least, <laughs> of the subterranean dwellers of San Francisco. Oh. That right. also live out of time. Right. And the Morlocks. The Morlocks, it would be a big step up to go to San Francisco. First of all, it's warmer. <laughs> Secondly, they got those nice lanterns and stuff. Whenever we see the alley, which is the base of operations for the Morlocks, which is just literally a system of interconnected tunnels underneath New York, where mm. the Morlocks live, uh, yeah, it would be a way better situation for them. They're uh, also- don't, don't live under New York, man. I know, but they also led by Callisto. 
who is a badass warrior woman who wears a vest of leadership. It's literally just like a denim or leather vest that she wears. It's hard right. to tell. It's the idea is that the character design for Callisto is she wears a vest. Uh. It's just that later in this story, she will bequeath her vest to Storm as a visual demonstration of her passing the torch of leadership, uh. which is also just reestablishing it because in a previous story, the Morlocks are X-Men characters. So obviously there was an X-Men story where the Morlocks uh, get roped up into a fight with the X-Men because Callisto kidnaps Angel because Warren Worthington III, AKA Angel, is just a hunky gorgeous dude with wings. And she's like, I wanna bang the Angel Man. And so she has the Morlocks kidnap him and bring him down. Is the Callisto also a Morlock? I mean, she's the leader of the Morlock, so technically by default I would assume she is. I mean, it, Morlock is not like a sub-race. I was gonna say, it's is a there title. a race it's a of people? It's not, it's just where it's, you go when yeah. you're gross. It's like the Lollipop Guild. Okay, so it's not like a race of beings. That's what the that's what the people call themselves I in the yeah. Land of Oz. But the Lollipop Guild were also all like shorter people. Exactly. These are gross-looking mutants. <laughs> yeah, but like it's a lot of parallels. Just, yeah, so they all, all live. It's just all grossness. It's like any type of grossness. Oh no! Is it like the mutants in Futurama where they're all different yeah, it, types? Of I mean, mutants? it's that trope certainly, but. Yes, there are very ma many different mutants. And in fact, to liken it more to Futurama, you know, like Leela is the least gross looking one. There are degrees of gross looking Morlocks as well. In fact, Tommy, one of the Morlocks that we meet in the beginning of the story is just like a gorgeous young lady who right. can turn two dimensional uh, and also is brightly colored. And so, you've seen her in previous stories. But she, I'm like, a she, Morlock, oh, <laughs> don't look at me. Yeah, she well, self identifies as a Morlock. She does, yes. Right. Because she, Whereas like, we might say, well, you're not a Morlock, you're beautiful. <laughs> well, it's like, no one uses, <laughs> no top no, no top dwellers refer to Morlocks as like a kind of derisive term. Uh. They're not like, oh God, dude, clean up your shirt and tighten your tie, you look like a Morlock. <laughs> Okay, so then they're just people who have chosen to live underground. Yes. And you're saying, yeah, but most of them are gross, though. They are. I mean, look at them. But, I mean, you won't be able to because, of course, they're massacred very quickly into the story. Ah. But, yes. So, Callisto runs the Morlocks. Anyway, the point is that <laughs> Callisto kidnaps Angel and the X-Men go to get him. And then they fight. And, essentially, what happens is Storm challenges Callisto for leadership. And it's just a, it's just a ploy to get freed so they can kick her ass and leave. But Storm is a woman of her word. And so they battle. And there's this awesome fight between Callisto and Storm, in which Storm succeeds and becomes the leader of the Morlocks. And she's like, well, I'm not gonna live down here. So <laughs> I'm going to technically lead the Morlocks, but I'll let Callisto be my de facto ruler. She'll be my steward of the Morlocks. <laughs> nah, she'll be my general. <laughs> so to be essentially like- I'm like, the emperor. And, and you're the queen of the Morlocks. Yeah, like you can, you but you can, are beneath me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and. Essentially, nothing changes, and that's what Storm likes. It's just like, right. I just want to leave. Yeah. And whatever. You're just going to pay Yeah, but whenever me. Callisto sees her, she's like, why not? You're wearing the vest. In this, Storm leaves for other reasons, and then Callisto finds her, presumably to fight her, but instead she's just like, here, wear the vest. And then that helps to change Storm's costume into like the punk rock, mohawk wearing, vest donning <laughs> version that people seem to not be able to forget about. So the, the Morlocks are massacred under her watch or under... Technically under Storm's watch, but also Storm put Callisto in charge. So yes, Callisto theoretically was... Right, the but the buck stops at the top. I mean, it does, but like, I didn't put you in charge to let them get massacred. <laughs> well, the your leadership that... was so poor that I was not able to prevent them from I being I thought massacred. I could trust you to lead the moral. Did you reach out decision. to me when they were in trouble? No, I mean, then this is on you. <laughs> admittedly, it was pretty quick, but that's true, exactly. <laughs> so, the Morlocks are slaughtered, but we'll get to that in a second. As <laughs> it turns out, uh, it was Storm who sent the people oh to Oh my get God, massacred. there actually is. she's like, I don't want to deal with this <laughs> I anymore. gotta do something yeah, about this Morlock these, like, problem. I keep getting these gross wet letters from the, you know, from underground, and I'm just <laughs> done. I'm done with it. One time I got they a letter. Float up through the toilet. It was it's pinned gross. to a rat. No. <laughs> got to deal with this tribute, problem. and it's in the form of like, like food that's been thrown away, yep. but to them is normal. Yeah. So they think it like I, I can't like criticize them for it because yeah. that is their currency. <laughs> But like, I hate it. But I hate it and I, I'm done with it. Honestly, I have just grown streets past it at this point. Uh, some mutants are being massacred in the form of a Hellfire Club member named Richard and his girlfriend who was a Morlock. <gasps> Hellfire members and Morlocks living in peace and harmony? Yeah, kinda. The Hellfire Club had to team up with the X-Men what is the Hellfire Club? I've the heard Hellfire it a thousand Club is a group times. Of, I don't really know. They're a group know. of hedonistic mutants that ah. uh, have sex with each other and uh, you know jump into Scrooge McDucky and money bins and also try to secretly like run things. Oh, they have a lot of 
There's a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, like, seemingly. You know, you'd think there is, but, like, for me, the Hellfire Club is just an excuse to have orgies. Plus, they play D&D. <laughs> and they must play D&D as well. I mean, look at how they're dressed. But... Right. Uh, they, the name is is uh, a reference to the fact that they've embraced yes. the fact that they they're hedonistic ways. I see. And they, they also I assumed it was because they embraced the fact that like they're closer to the to hell. Oh yeah. Wait, the Hellfire Club doesn't live underground with the Morlocks. Do no, they, they don't. Never they mind. live away <laughs> above in very nice palatio estates. They they have money, mm. and the idea is that they use their money and influence in order to like make decisions and. Have, and and it'll organize influence. the orgies. Oh, Naturally, okay. Of course, you're gonna need that. That makes sense. So it's kind of like the Illuminati. Yes. Yeah, it's eyes wide shut Illuminati. Yes, exactly. Do they wear masks? They do or? not wear masks. Oh, okay. They don't need to because they also have cool powers. I see. So they're out in the open. Yeah. Well, they, they operate we in the open. You know who they are, but also yeah. like they protect themselves from like people throwing bricks at their faces, which happens in these stories because <laughs> they're mutants. Uh, because most of their mutant dumb is either obfuscated by money or is just swept under the rug because you know, screw you. Also, oh, we have people who can like manipulate your mind, like Emma Frost or Mastermind. Okay, so, so if anyway. you're in the know, you know about the Hellfire Club, and if you're a regular person... You never even hear about them. Yeah, okay. Yes, if they're doing their job correctly, you'll never hear about the Hellfire Club. <laughs> okay. you know, until their master stroke is, is achieved. Right, you know, which is... Global orgies, I don't know, <laughs> but I assume. Yeah. But global if... orgies and the destruction of the Moloids! Yeah. <laughs> Morlocks! Morlocks. No, no, they're fine with the Morlocks. That's true. Oh, they, they, do, the they do help with the Morlocks. Anyway, that was also just an excuse to see the Hellfire Club and the X-Men, who, of course, the X-Men and Hellfire Club were bitter enemies during the Dark Phoenix saga, mm. but now uh, we're kind of softening their image because we also like find these characters interesting, and mm. maybe Emma Frost might become a headmistress someday of the X-Men, so let's oh, just... Oh, apparently, like, you know, you people like bad boys. So like, oh, the it. Hellfire Club. Oh, maybe they're going to make them a little more yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's the 80s. Let's, let's, let's ratchet that up a little bit. So the Hellfire Club is established as being, like, you know, on the mend, and they're also on the lookout for a new white qu king. Because they have the white queen, that's Emma Frost. They had the black queen, that was Jean Grey, when she was the phoenix, kind of. And okay. uh, we also got a, a white king, uh, hey, Magneto, you want to be the White King? Which, of course, they invite no. him to do. He does say no, but then he thinks about it more, and he's like, oh, I do want to get in on those orgies, though. <laughs> and so he does consider it. Anyway, forgetting all that. Mm -hmm. Opening of it, uh, these two mutants, one Hellfire, one Morlock, they are killed by a group of very specific-looking bad guys, which we're going to call the Marauders. They get a full page reveal later, but for mm. now we're like, Ooh, let's let's really bury the lead on these badasses. Right. Uh, but, Put them in shadow. Uh -huh. and, yeah. So uh, Tommy, the colorful the Morlock, she escapes. They're over on the west coast, by the way, and she jumps onto a freight train, and they follow her because they know that she's going to lead them to the Morlocks because they don't know where the Morlocks are because the Morlocks have a, they're like the Hellfire Club. They're a really exclusive club, uh, <laughs> you know, in terms of living in. They just live under the streets of New York. Yeah, but no one's figured gonna, that out. Yeah, yeah, but like, it's like trying to find the turtles. Yeah, exactly. You're not just gonna like have a sign. You, you gotta know where to go. Plus, I you know how like, many tunnels there are under New York City. I don't, but I, I assume like that they're intricate. Ask insane. a city sanitation worker. They'll be like, oh, the Morlocks. Oh, I know exactly where they are. I'm down there every day, I'm, eight hours a day. I trip over a Morlock <laughs> twice a week. But yes. So, anyway. Yeah, the below Union Square. They go. Uh, so Tommy escapes, the marauders follow, and for good measure, they murder poor Richard. Right. Who's also sad, like they shoot him, and we just get like the real gravity of how horrific this massacre is, because of course, again, comics code, we can't see how massacred they are. Right. But it's almost <laughs> worse because like they shoot Richard with a harpoon. Oh. It's an energy infused harpoon, but a harpoon nonetheless. Yeah. And he's like, I'm paralyzed. So he tries to reach for his gun, but he no longer has control over his own limbs. And then they blow his head off. Off panel, but yeah. still off. Yeah. Because a gun is pressed against his head, and then there's a kaboom in the next panel, so we can draw the, the, you know, the connections. Jeez. And you're like, ah. Why didn't they just shoot him with a gun? Why did they shoot him with a paralysis gun well, no, just so they could execute him? Just uh, shoot him with a regular gun. The harpoon guy has to kill him with a harpoon because that's his move. Oh, they all, the the marauders see. are also mutants, and they all have very specific mutant abilities. Right, like guns. Well, Scalp Hunter uses a gun, but... <laughs> Harpoon and, and a harpoon person and a harpoon, and a harpoon person harpoon uses guy, a harpoon. That's well, not a power. Well, no, because the, no, they're special harpoons oh. that have energy infused in them that can oh. also change status quo for characters when they're hit by them. It's really sad. Like Richard's like, no, Tommy, don't leave me. And she's like, 
No, it just leaves. Yeah. Just leaves that poor man to die. Her boyfriend, presumably. And then she gets onto the freight train and she's like, oh, I made it. And of course, the marauders don't take the same freight train. They just follow it. Okay. It doesn't matter how, how they, they It's one train. train. I know. So yeah. It's, yeah. Just so look they, up where it's going. But they, and then she drive gets there. off the train and then they're like, nah. So she had the entire ride from the West Coast to the East Coast to think she made it. And then once she gets off, they're like, you didn't. And then they kill her. Jeez. Why are they after Plus, these mutants in particular? Uh, there's a very specific reason why they're after those mutants in particular. Oh, okay. It's it's the marching orders of their leader, a character that has not yet been invented but is established in this, uh, who will, of course, be part of the storied history of the X-Men from here on out. But we're going to get into that in a minute. There's also another member of the Marauders that does not make her debut in this moment named Malice. Malice has other plans on the other side of the country. Or in Texas, I don't recall. I think that... Because the idea is that there's another mutant named Dazzler. She was a pop star, and she was also created as part of a whole marketing initiative by Marvel, but let's not get into Dazzler right now. Let's just say that she has fantastic Dazzle powers. <laughs> and uh, she's also a, uh, a pop star. And because it was outed that she was a mutant, her career was destroyed. Right. So she dyes right. her hair black and ends up joining another band. And that band is headed up by Lila Cheney, who's also a female mutant pop star. But because Dazzler Hannah montana nobody knows that that's Dazzler. So she joins up with Lila Cheney's band and ends up just quietly being part of the band and just enjoying her keytar. Is this this Allison person? Allison Blair is Dazzler. Ah, uh, okay. So... She is no longer blonde, but now a brunette, and she laments that fact at least twice in this book, where she's like, <sighs> I can't believe I'm not blonde anymore! And I'm like, all right, let's give it a rest. So Malice is like, I'm gonna ruin Alice and Blair's life more because that's part of my mission as a member of the Marauders. And I'm like, whatever, Malice. Isn't so, he just gonna kill her or something? Well, no, he wants to, she wants to kill her career first. So she ends up, because Malice's power, she can possess other people. Oh. Uh, and I don't know if it's limited oh. to mutants, but she can possess people. So she possesses Dazzler and makes Dazzler act like an asshole. Nice. And also use her powers so that people can go, Oh, that's Dazzler, that bitch! It's, it just gets worse <laughs> She and worse. jumped careers! Yeah, exactly. Well, fans. Yeah. She thought she could get away with that. No, 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 Muty. <laughs> Anyway. I see you. Uh, oh, you changed your hair. Don't think I fell for it. Well, you didn't you last did. year, dipshit. <laughs> well, no, I knew. The truth here. I knew. Uh, I knew. I, 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 I wanted I, I to lull you into a false sense of security. <laughs> so anyway, the, the X-Men are also reeling from a battle they had with the future-born Super Sentinel known as Nimrod. We talked about at length. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's uh, he, he is hilariously non-threateningly colored. He's pink and white. And I always found that hilarious. <laughs> Every time I saw Nimrod, I'm like, "Oh fuck, it's Nimrod!" I would always go like, "He looks like he's he looks like the Easter Bunny. Like, why is he? Why?" Is he? But I kind of love how scary he's he is. Hot pink is like in. Yeah, he's hot pink and white, and I'm like, I kind of love it. It's just it's that real, Nimrod. It's, yeah, no, oh, no, okay. no, 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 that's, that's somebody else. N Nimrod's a pink. robot. Oh no, that thing is just hot pink. That's a Morlock. Yeah, that that is a Morlock. Oh, okay. Uh, but I kind of love what a Chad move for Nimrod. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm unkillable, and I look like this. Yeah, well, I like pink. Yeah, what do you want from me? Uh, doesn't matter. I'm gonna kill you. Right. So anyway, the, the X Men almost die. Uh, this also screws up a lot of like classic members of the X Men. All right, hang on. Which way do we go from here? How about this? <laughs> so we have all these other characters that were established in the '70s. Now we're in the '80s, and we're trying to do something new. So the X Men leave. The original five. They essentially leave the team. And uh, oh man, okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So, after the Phoenix Saga, Jean Grey died. Uh -huh. Meh, that's no done. more Jean Grey. But then Cyclops is sad, and he goes to Alaska, and he meets a chick who looks exactly like Jean Grey, named Madeline Pryor. Right. right. And he ends up marrying her and having a baby with her, named Nathan, who will of course become Cable. <laughs> right. But let's not go too far yet. So, <laughs> Cyclops is with Maddie, who has no powers. She just unfortunately looks like Jean. And as far as and everyone's Chris like, that's friggin' weird, dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. But also, they're strangely fine with it because Chris, Chris Claremont wants them to be. Right. Well, apparently, and Maddie's fine with it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this is great. You know, she's all, the other one was in all those pictures. So, like, it's like we've been together for years. <laughs> Does he just trick her and be like, no, you're my wife. You have amnesia. No, no. <laughs> look at you. You look just like her. He's very quick to be like, you're not Gene. You're great. 
But <laughs> you're not cheating. I'm going to remind you of that of every day. No, no. Well, he does. It's horrible. So like they, they end up. What a fucking dick. Yeah. Well, it gets worse. He gets married to her. They have a baby, and then Gene comes back because Jim Shooter's like, "Hey, bring back Gene." <laughs> Ellen Pryor sucks. How does this bring Gene back? Well, like, she doesn't have... Ellen Pryor doesn't occupy any role. Why is she even She's in the book? She's not next Why they even Why is she her? here? Because, because Claremont wants to grow and progress the characters that he has laid claim to. And so for him, he's like, Cyclops is too old to be part of this team. So I want to make him leave. What makes adult men leave their friends and family? Ah, a woman. So I'll give him a wife and a baby and he'll leave. But then, how about, we also want to bring back Gene, but we can't bring back Gene. Why? Well, because dead means dead at Marvel, but more importantly, because Gene annihilated an entire race of people. <laughs> yeah, it's right. real problematic. It is. It's, a, it's, it's gonna be tough for us to square that circle. Oh wait, I've got an idea. How about it wasn't Gene? And they're like, but it clearly and firmly was. And they're like, well, what about this? And so what they do is they end up saying that when Gene drove the plane into the water to save the team, when the Phoenix possessed her, the Phoenix didn't actually possess her and blast out of the water and go, I'm Jean Grey and Phoenix, ha ah. Instead, the Phoenix Force is like, I gleaned what Jean was feeling and thinking in her mind, and then I made a perfect copy of her and put her into a Kryptonian healing coma under the water, and then I made a body that looks and acts and thinks just like Jean. And then all that stuff happened to the Phoenix copy of Gene, who died. And then Namor and company find the real Gene in a cocoon under the water. And so that's where real Gene comes in. But that's still not Madeline Pryor. Right. That sucks. Who just looks like Gene. Yeah, so, Madeline is so wait a minute, did somebody also copy her separately and make Madeline Pryor? Well, so here's Claremont wants... <laughs> there's a lot of people that look like other people here. Oh, uh, there's only three. Is Gene, Phoenix Gene, and Maddie. Right. But as far as Claremont's concerned, he wanted it to just be a weird coincidence, which I call That's horseshit. even weirder. Look, I know. I don't like it, but it also is. What? She was in Alaska, right? Yeah. All right. So like opposite side of the country, mm -hmm. you run into someone who looks a lot like someone you know. Yeah. That's believable. No, but it's very Yeah, but why would she look much? so much like her? Yeah. And it's because she's actually a clone of Gene made by Mr. Sinister. <laughs> For God the expressed purpose of making her bang Cyclops and make a baby. Because Mr. Sinister is obsessed with Summer's DNA. Right. So he's like, here's Maddie, bang her, make the baby, and then I'll take the baby. And now I've got- Thank you, that's my baby. Uh, that's me. I'm sorry, is Maddie in on this? Nope. Nope, she has nope. no idea. Well, she just doesn't so have power, so she's not able been, to protect hey, the baby. why bang Jean Grey and steal that baby? Because, because she, she didn't was want dead. children. Oh, he hatched the plan after she was already dead. So when Gene, the real Gene, comes back, Scott is like, what? You mean I've been banging this fake Gene? By the way, as far as he's concerned, an adult woman who exists, who had parents and was not a clone. And so Gene's like, well, it looks like you have like a life now, so bye. And he's like, whoa, whoa, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, and, 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 Why can't I going? have both? No, you know. You see, I, I'd almost respect it if Scott's like, <laughs> I mean, all right, how do I make this happen. Right. No, he, he immediately leaves Maddie and the baby to chase Gene. Uh, Is he unhappy? Scott, you nope. fucking dog. Nope, he's just like, well, but you're not Gene though. Now I know I could have Gene. So goodbye. That, she was always better than you. Yes. I don't think you understand. She has powers. Right. Right. You were only ever a pale imitation of the thing I want. Yes, and he doesn't know how true that is because of course then it's gonna reveal that she is a clone and then she gets powers too, but- I was gonna say, if she's a clone, how come she didn't have powers? Well, you can't clone powers. Well, uh, no, yeah. because- That is not true, it's in their genetics. No, because Sinister wanted be. her to not have powers. He denied uh, her that. He removed the X gene or whatever. Yeah, he simply denied her that. Uh, denied her that. <laughs> well, uh, life found a way. <laughs> that's right. Well, and it does. Well, you know, because she's a sleeper agent for Sinister. Like, that's the thing, is that eventually oh. Sinister's like, all right, you're the Goblin Queen now. activate you, yeah. Plus, like, if, Jesus. if she doesn't have powers, but Scott does, how does Nathan have powers? Uh, because it's just a crapshoot, you never know. Two mutants could have a non-mutant baby. Wait, so Cable's mom isn't actually Jean Grey? Nope, it's Maddie. Oh, yeah. I don't think I knew that. Or maybe I did, but, but I forgot. Uh, but now it is Jean Grey because she was a clone. Well, it's no. it's well, it's it's it, Jean's clone named Maddie. Yeah, so biologically, it is she is identical to a child of Jean and Scott. Yes. So all that to say <laughs> that 
what happens is the X, the original five X-Men leave the X-Men because they're like, well, we've graduated. This is a school anyway. And right. so they form a crew called X-Factor. And X-Factor is a overt government group that pretends to be humans that hunt mutants. That's the premise that Bob Layton came up with. What? Where it's like, the, the premise of oh, X-Factor like the mutants. book is they, the, 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 rich, the real X-Men yeah. are pretending to be bad guys and not even pretend to be the X-Men, they're pretending to be new people. Right. So Angel has his wings wrapped around him and wearing a bodysuit over it and everything. And they go and they track down mutants and then kill them. But what they really do is they relocate them. How do right. you hide 15 foot wings? And he's always done it. Ever since his yep. inception, he just wraps the wings around him and wears a, a harness over them. Yeah, but like, okay. Yeah, mm. see his wings, they're up in that thing. No, that's the backpack he's wearing. Oh, okay. Well then where are the wings? They're wrapped around his body. The I know they're huge. It's artistic license. X Factor exists, and then Louis Simonson inherits the book, and she's like, "This sucks. This is stupid as fuck. Terrible." So every every issue of X Factor that Louis Simonson writes, they're like, "This is fucking stupid. <laughs> we should stop." When do we and, end this goddamn book? And when X Factor goes to a scene and other bad guy mutants show up, then they have to go hide behind a wall and put on their. X-Men fighting uniforms, but don't right. forget they're not X-Men, right, so but X-Factor is the bad guy human team, so the people who watch this, the humans that are like big fans of X-Factor, they call the new X-Men team that is secretly X-Factor, Exterminators, and those are evil mutants right. that rescue other mutants from the X-Factor's clutches. Oh my God! Why would they call them exterminators? Then? Because that's they're a cool name. Not exterminating anybody. No, no, because they are. Because they're evil mutants that are going to exterminate the human race. Oh, the human race, not the mutants who the X Factor is, are. Ex yeah, no, actually, X Factor are exterminators. exterminators. Yeah, they should be named the exterminators. Yeah, well, and I think maybe Louise Simonson is setting that up because, like, yeah. eventually they won't cancel X Factor, but they will keep the name. Mm -hmm. You also can't have that like continue on and on because. You'll never see X Factor and Extern or the Exterminators in the same place at it's the same true. time. <laughs> Have you ever yeah. noticed? That that you, you never noticed? see Exterminators and X Factor in the same place at the same time. So Exterminator team is doing what the X, what the be X doing. Factor team is doing, but people know they're doing it yes. and they hate them for it. That's right. And they think that X Factor is doing something different, yes. but actually it's the same thing. It's just rescuing people. Yeah, that's right. Well, let me ask you this. Why? why don't they just do that? <laughs> why don't they just be the exterminators all the time? Because the government is funding and right. processing an X Factor team. There's no money in the budget right. for a group of mutant terrorist organizations. Right, right, yeah, but right. We have is... to maintain the facade of X Factor yes. for the legitimacy and to get the phone call. Yeah. About yeah, the no mutant. one's gonna call in right. to let us know that we can recover and harbor a mutant. Right. But this is the government. Aren't they following up being like, hey, give us reports on what happened no, to no, the mutant. Well, the government, the government secretly, secretly wants to is save them. Yeah. Or at least oh. it's like, it's not like, well, we don't want to kill the mutants. We just want them to be not there. Yes. Like, and whatever you end up doing with them is your business. Right. That makes a yeah. lot more well, sense. Well, Cameron Hodge is the government agent that's like, okay, this is how we're going to manipulate the system. And then we're going to secretly run the mutant harboring organization through the right. government funded mutant. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Congress thinks that, that the mutants are being mutants. Mur murdered. Yes, but, the, but we in the room, right. we know what we're really doing. And then Cameron Hodge <laughs> becomes a bad guy. But whatever, <laughs> all you need to know is that there Man. are, that, that, is that X-Men became so unrecognizable <laughs> and no original characters are being used in it from the old X-Men team. That they were like, let's what? make a new team called X Factor that has the original five X Men. Right, to give them something to do. Yes, and to get old lapsed fans in on the action. Right. But also, don't with you want to see confusing, annoying premise? <laughs> yeah. Don't you want to see your favorite characters doing something you hate, yeah. wearing costumes you don't like? <laughs> well, I mean, no, it's true. So that's also happening. But but we're converging. Ooh, X Factor and X Men are finally going to cross paths because the other thing is. The X-Men don't know about the dual identities of X-Factor slash Exterminators. Why wouldn't they They worked know? with them! Why wouldn't they just tell them, by I, the way, we're X-Factor. The worst don't is... Don't punch it, us in the face. Well, because they never they never cross paths. Right. The X-Men are doing their thing, and X-Factor's doing their thing over there. But one of the X-Men, Wolverine, discovers the truth and just keeps it to himself during Mutant Massacre. <laughs> it's like, huh. Including... The fact that Jean Grey is alive. 
Because, of course, the new X-Men or the uncanny X-Men don't know any of that. Right. They just, as far as they're concerned, the old class of X-Men graduated and went on and did other things. Uh, does Wolverine know it because of the scent? Yes. Uh, wouldn't Madeline also <laughs> smell exactly like her? Uh, maybe. Uh, well, maybe uh, Mr. Sinister uh, manipulated that. Yeah, she's so like, I know that Wolverine would be able to smell her, so I changed her scent DNA. Yeah. You know, so it's a clone of Gene, except for that one. Except for those two things, the power yeah. thing the and powers, the smell uh, thing. Yeah. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you know what gives her her, uh, her powers is her, her scent. Oh, yeah. I also I altered her brain enough so that Professor X wouldn't be able to tell that Oh, yeah, that too. Person. Well, conveniently enough, Professor X isn't around. Oh, okay. He's in space. Oh, thank God. Yeah, with the Shi'ar. This is so, this is real, real complicated. That's X-Men, I mean, maybe. this is just X. This is not this book. And I guess except the part about Wolverine discovering. A couple things in this book. are crossing yeah. over. I was correct when I said this was a soap opera. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's been. what X-Men yeah. has always been. Ugh. Who's the creepy lady with the gold face? That's Destiny, Mystique's wife. Okay. Sure. So, <laughs> the X-Men fought Nimrod, and Kurt Nightcrawler got beaten, I think into a coma, and then he recovers, and then he disappears. But it's it's really bad. And well, the I mean, X-Men- he disappears is what he does. Well, no, he teleports, but they can't find him. <laughs> he teleports in a way that he can't be found anymore. Oh, that's true. Oh. No, he goes to a place they don't know where he is, and so they are looking for him. Betsy Braddock is not technically a X-Man, but she is hanging out with them. That's Psylocke, pre-Asian body. Okay. Betsy Braddock is a twin along with Brian Braddock, a.k.a. Captain Britain. She's also psychokinetic. She can focus the totality of her psychic powers into a psi knife, but not yet. In fact, <laughs> she does wield a knife in this, but a real one. Uh, but maybe that gives her the idea to eventually focus the totality of her psychic abilities into a knife. But regardless- It's gonna take a lot of work though. It's gonna take some time. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought of just using a knife? I mean, she does in this. <laughs> ah, meet the Marauders. What the fuck is this? A mess. What is this guy? That's Scalp Hunter, a Native American bad guy. Eventually, they change his name because, you know. It's really inappropriate. Because they're like, maybe we shouldn't. So his name is Grey Crow, so they're just like, well, we'll just call you Grey Crow now. Like his last name is that, so they're just like, yeah. oh, your, your, your character name is Grey Crow. They are something to look at. Yeah. There's a goddamn Pegasus in this book. Yes, there is. Sure. That's Danny Moonstar's awesome. Pegasus. Brightwind. Yeah. Yeah. Does Angel get along with that horse? Do they like bond over having wings? <laughs> I think that's pretty offensive. How dare you? Just because they have wings? And you're also gonna suggest that he's also Angel's dad or something? <laughs> What's going on with that horse there, Angel? Well, don't get any funny ideas of Brightwind. I'm half Pegasus. Man, I have wings. I yeah. have wings, he yeah. has wings. We have something in common. I'm not gonna fuck the horse. Yeah, well, where'd you, you get better the not. wings? I want to get your wings. I already fucked the horse. Yeah, I'm not gonna fuck it <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, so you have you know wings. Who we fuck in the air. <laughs> he does. Angel does fuck in the air. There's what? a sequence where he has sex with a younger woman than he should be Ugh. over her parents. Wait, what? <laughs> and so she jumps into his arms, and then they fly up over them, and then they bang. Her clothes fall on their heads. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and that happens way more recently than this. <laughs> Angel's, Angel's a problem. That's, that's. Please tell me the dad just gets a gun. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going duck hunting. <laughs> That'd be amazing. No, they're just upset. And then we move, we, we, we thankfully move along. Yeah. That killed me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's that, horrible. That's, that's. I'm just like, why would you do this? Comic book creators it's funny. aren't it is, horny Isn't it funny? This isn't funny. That's not funny at all. That's what nah, Dad said. it's pretty funny. This isn't funny at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like to imagine somebody like challenging him about, okay, so you're like half person, half angel, whatever, like, so like your dad was a human and your mom was a... a Pegasus? Human. What? <laughs> you know, you got the human part from the one parent and the wings, obviously. That's not how... So we meet the Marauders and they slaughter most of the Morlocks. We, oh, we right see, here? Yes, and they like introduce themselves they just like, show up and like, like, hey, I'm Riptide, and then they murder a child. Ah. And then everyone's like, I'm Scalp Hunter. Don't worry, I'm gonna change my name in about 20 years. <laughs> are they killing they, the Morlocks right now? Yeah, they're the just, the, the, yeah, they're the Morlocks. Oh, they're yeah, the Morlocks. they are Morlocks, oh, you had it right. 
Yeah. So we go to the X-Mansion, we meet up with the X-Men, who are of course Wolverine, <laughs> Colossus, Rogue, Shadowcat, Magneto, Nightcrawler, Psylocke, kind of. She's not really an official member, she becomes one later hmm. uh, at all. And so we see, you know, the X-Men are kind of like enjoying some downtime after getting their asses handed to them by Nimrod, and Shadowcat grabs some snacks and brings them to Ileana Rasputin, who is visiting and because uh, she's a member of the New Mutants mm -hmm. and she's also Kitty's best friend because uh, Ileana is supposed to be like a little girl but she was artificially aged up to be a teenager around Kitty's age and so while Ileana, while Ileana was advanced aged she became best friends with Kitty. Okay. Eventually she will become a child again and then get a horrible debilitating disease. Yeah, the, like the, yeah the legacy virus. Legacy virus. Does she yeah. become a child mentally as well? Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't like go, I'm trapped in this child body, please! It's a waking nightmare! <laughs> yeah, no, or at least not, they don't acknowledge it. I can't believe they aged her up and then de-aged her back And then de-aged her, back, her back, and I'm like, don't do that. Why did you do that? Why did you even change anything? Just, I don't know. Well, I, wanted, I, I didn't have any stories for like a child. Oh wait, I did. Well, Let me just put it right back. <laughs> yeah. Tell those stories. Or I have outer stories for a until later. Yeah. So after the fight with Nimrod, Rogue goes to, uh, she's looking for Nightcrawler, but she also is like, oh, I'm, I'm, my clothes are all ripped up. So she goes into like Fifth Avenue and gets some new clothes and gets like dull, dulled up. Meanwhile, people are like, I saw you fly. You must be a friggin' mutant. <laughs> and then literally like somebody else is like, well, she could be an Avenger or something. They're like, who what's the difference? Oh my They're God. All bullshit. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, oh. Thank you, because everybody's always like, hey, how come people have no problem with Spider-Man, but they have every problem with the mutants? So I'm like, no, the Marvel Universe hates everybody equally. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in the Marvel Universe is, is a little racist. Well, until <laughs> they get powers. And then they're like, oh, now I get it. What team am I on? Because I'm cool. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. It's really just jealousy. Hey, 100%. <laughs> Rogue saves a couple of guys, a couple of mooks who were working on a scaffold, and then one of them falls in love with her and then defends her against racists at the mall. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Right. All that matters is Rogue notices an ad on the side of a bus for X Factor. You got a problem with mutants and you need them taken care of? Well, just give us a call. It's like, what? Ew. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what I are they doing? All of them. I'm going to sneak up behind those X Factor people and murder them without asking them who they <laughs> are and what they're do doing. <laughs> exactly. So, step, 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 step. <laughs> so, Kitty and Colossus and Ileana teleport, ironically, to Nightcrawler, because Ileana can also teleport. And uh, sh they take them to Nightcrawler where they rescue him from an anti mutant mob. A lot of mobs. Mm -hmm. And are pretty most big of them right screaming now. about uh, mutants and whatnot. But they go and they recover Nightcrawler. And this is where you get, like, in the cartoon show or whatever, a big fight. But instead, Kitty's like, hey, what's your problem? And then everyone voices their opinions about, like, why they think mutants are garbage. And essentially, Kitty's like, as a Jewish person, uh, that sounds a lot like being a Nazi. And a couple of them are like, yeah. It's and, oh, I am a Nazi. Right, or, <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, and then starts like rolling it down yeah, in his like, head, and he's oh, like, oh, well, oh, I gotta go. No. So eventually she like reverse psychologies everybody and they just walk away. Right. Awkward and uncomfortable. God, I wish that would work today. <laughs> yeah. Or ever, yeah. Yeah, so then they take Nightcrawler back to the base. Meanwhile, Storm and Wolverine have a conversation, which essentially boils down to Storm lost her powers. She got shot by a thing that Forge made, we haven't dealt with that yet, that takes her powers away, and she's still technically de facto leader of the X-Men, and she is still the leader of the X-Men, despite the fact she has no powers. And uh, so she's like kind of questioning whether she has a place in this team, slash uh, has don't. any business being a, a leader of the X-Men. You don't. Yeah, but she does, because she's a badass. <laughs> How, and you're gonna go into battle, you're just gonna die immediately? kick ass. No, she, she, well, she uh, does. We see. We establish that she has like I'm a, a great a strategist. Strong, strong, eh, kind of, more like she's just a, she doesn't, she's a fighter. She's a fighter. She's, yeah, a she's got skills. Yeah, that's why she's attracted to Wolverine. She's like, I, I have guns. Right? That's all I need. <laughs> exactly. So, X Factor springs into action because they are dealing with a character that they're looking for, whose name I believe is Rusty Collins, aka Fire Fist. <laughs> Rusty Collins is. That's a terrible name. Terrible name, terrible character. It's horrible. Out at Central Park with a chick. Uh, I believe she's also a Morlock, and X Factor shows up and they're like, Rusty, what are you doing? Meanwhile, X Factor springs into action to help, but anti-mutant hysteria also uh, breaks out in Central Park. So Freedom Force is dispatched. Freedom Force is formerly the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, who have also made a deal with the US government <laughs> to, I don't know, do stuff. And so Freedom Force is- To be a Freedom Force. Yes, it's like these are mutants that work for the government and also help deal with mutant-related problems. 
So that's Freedom Force. What is their Force, incentive to do that? I guess just money? They're, they're career criminals and they want their uh, records expunged. Ah. And so they do. And so we got Mystique and Destiny and Blob and Okay, so and your Avalanche. job will be to commit crimes as mutants <laughs> very loudly and stir up all this anti-mutant sentiment. Right. Then you're going to put on different outfits <laughs> and you're going to show up and save the day from yourselves as a different group. Right? This is all part of our master plan to control the populace or something. Oh I don't know. God. Okay, so why do we have another team that's also trying to save mutants <laughs> yeah. under the guise of, you know, hating solving the mutant problem, them. hating yeah. them? Oh, well, we don't want anyone to get hurt. Right? We haven't decided which one's gonna work out better yet, yeah. so we figure we'll just pay both teams. Well, and it could be because Freedom Force shows up to quell the problem and to track down, I think the idea is that they are hunters of problem mutants like X-Factor, but they're using their mutant abilities and maybe it's some kind of secret subliminal way to be like, no, mutants work for everybody, see? Like they're willing to track down their own kind for you. Right. But the mob is like, I don't care what your mission is, Mutants are mutants and you suck, and they're throwing bricks right. at them. Also, weren't you evil? Right, but let's not worry about that. <laughs> also, I hey, you're Blob, you really killed my mom. Crowd. Yeah, I also love Mystique because when she's dealing with it, she morphs into Uncle Sam. <laughs> she's like, let's go, and I'm like, thank you. That's awesome. Isn't he a character? In DC. Okay. <laughs> so then Freedom Force bumps into X-Factor and the mob is like, yay, X-Factor's here, real people. Screw you, Freedom Force. I'm like, okay, the irony is so thick, it's another character in this room. <laughs> but also like, Freedom Force is like, it's one more step to be an evil. One yeah, more. Uh, yeah. I should have just stayed I evil. I am so close. Right? Meanwhile, X-Factor also has another little friend whose name is Artie, and Artie is a Morlock and he's been living with them. And he gets visions and he also can't talk. And that's convenient. But he sounds really useful. Mm -hmm. But Artie <laughs> is looking for Rusty, and then he gets a, a blip about the mutant massacre in the tunnels. So he tries to tell Cameron Hodge, and Cameron Hodge's like, go away, have a, have a, have a, have a little like, conniption fit over there. <laughs> and so he kicks him out, and then he, he, he can also project images. What's, he his, can't, what's, he, it, what's his name? Artie. Artie, yeah. Ever heard of the chalkboard Artie? Yeah, he does. Just, well, no, he projects an image of what, because he can't, he can't write, like, oh. words. So he projects an image of what he's gonna go do, because when the Freedom Force X-Factor fight breaks out, Rusty and his Morlock girlfriend go into the tunnels. Okay. Of course, that's a bad place to be right, right now, they because don't the know. Marauders are down there. Yeah. How many teams do we have right now? <laughs> okay, Freedom Force, X-Factor. Who are also the Exterminators. Who are also the Exterminators. Uh, the Hellfire Club. Yep. The X Men, uh -huh. uh, the Marauders, the Marauders, the Morlocks, and the Morlocks. The Morlocks. Anybody else? <laughs> and the New Mutants? They haven't really shown the up yet, but show up, look in the tunnels, and leave. They have their own adventures, <laughs> but they are also technically part of this. Yeah. And by the way, Seven. if you are confused about the reading order or keeping it all straight, they asked Walt Simonson to draw an easy-to-read map of how to read and follow Mutant Massacre. Oh my and God. it is the <laughs> least comprehensible map I've ever seen. And I love that they had the audacity to put it in the collection as if to articulate this was a mess. And it's not a mess, by the way. It's really straightforward. One of the easiest to follow X-Men events of all time. And that's why the episode's three fucking hours. <laughs> well, the problem is you can go from, you can go two different directions out of this one. Yeah. Well, well there's your problem right there. Uh -huh. Like, don't do that. Make don't it go that. in linear order. <laughs> yeah. Or have a book called well, Mutant Massacre 1 through 10. Right, well do you want to skip the Uncanny X-Men? No problem, just stick with X-Factor. <laughs> just follow the pipeline of X-Factor, you're good. Yeah. What or, happens over here? Well, if you want to get the whole thing, you'll have to read that too. You'll have to stop by on the Mighty Thor There's or Power Thor Pack. books in here. In what order? Eh, this order. This all they got the arrows, yeah. Just follow gravity. What if I were to read them all? Oh. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> There's a Daredevil book in this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm technically in New York. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of characters in New York. Someone calls someone Spider-Man in this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Some kids call Thor Spider-Man because he's in his Sigmund alter ego. Not <laughs> Donald Blake, the one where he's like Norwegian. Anyway, <laughs> how would anyone mistake that for Spider-Man? So the X-Men recover Nightcrawler, they go back to the mansion. They're, they're all like hanging the out for The problem was easily minutes. solved, okay. Well, yeah. Well, remember, they solve their problem with words, which is how you're supposed to solve all your problems. A Morlock that also is basically a mole. Not to be confused with a moloid. <laughs> look, he's clearly not a moloid. He's a a morloid? <laughs> I love it. This mole man, lowercase m's, 
shows up and goes, X-Men help the Marauders are murdering the Morlocks. <laughs> uh, and then he dies from his wounds. Oh. And they're like, yikes. And so then uh, Psylocke is like, I have psychic powers. Did he, did he die because of what was happening underground or from tunneling through the ground? No, he's, he, he's a mole man. He can tunnel. He's supposed to be able to tunnel. He, he was he, shot or something. If he looked like this and tunneling killed him, that sucks. <laughs> It's the worst. I look like this, and I can run, and I can still run until I'm dead. <laughs> oh, you, he's not. He dug himself to death. He, yeah, he dug to death. No, he's he was here. It's the John Henry of friggin' <laughs> of the mole, mole, the mole, 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 mole people. Yeah. So he dies, and uh, Psylocke gets a, a, a psychic vision of what's going on, so they know to go to the the Morlocks being massacred by the Marauders. So let's go down there. So they go down there, and. Wolverine is like, oh my god, I smell very familiar scents. And this could be any number of characters, but for us, it's the X-Men. But the original mm, X-Men, who right. are now X-Factor. X-Factor. Or right. Exterminators. Who I guess he just never ran into before. That's right. Mm. That's right. Uh, by design. By editorial right. design. Right, 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 Keep them right. separate. Yeah. Until this massive event. Right. So then, they are attacked by the Marauders, and the Marauders are like, nah! And it's a big, ridiculous fight. Uh, Vertigo attacks them, and Nightcrawler's like, oh, you like making people dizzy? And so he grabs her, and he teleports to like 12 different places in a few seconds. And she's like, <laughs> just pass out. Nice. Yes, yeah, that's what you do to us. But <laughs> that knocks him out, because that was real bad. That was tough for him, too. Yep. Yeah. But then he is attacked. See, he even he can exhaust himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, it's true. Yeah. Well, he's also physically exhausted from the beating he took oh, from yeah. previous. Yeah. So, you know, he, he, he pulled his weight, but then he gets his ass kicked by Riptide, uh, who then steals back Vertigo. Vertigo and then leaves. Which you'll see, this is a disturbing trend where the, our heroes will show up, the Marauders will arrive, having murdered a bunch of innocent people, they'll have a fight, and then the Marauders will leave. <laughs> and then go murder some more people. So they grab a couple of surviving members of the Morlocks and they're like, all right, Ileana, teleport them out of here along with Nightcrawler and then don't be in the book anymore unless it's called New Mutants. And she's like, okay, and so she leaves. <laughs> and Got then... So Scalp Under murders a bunch of, uh, like an old woman and some children, and uh, Arclight, who's the bruiser, fights Colossus, because you want to see that, because they're badasses. Uh, Shadowcat fights Scalp Hunter. There's a horrible sequence where Scalp Hunter like, sneaks up on Shadowcat, puts a barrel of his gun against her head, and then pulls the trigger, but she phases through it and doesn't die. But it's Jeez. like, yeah. And when yeah, but like split second. Uh-huh, it's like, whoa. We're just wandering around underground having random encounters that's that exactly result right. in fights. Yeah, yeah. and uh, some cool, of these marauders dungeon. are- Yeah, yeah it's some, a dungeon. That's right. <laughs> and some of these marauders are like pretty evenly matched with the X-Men, like mm. there's Scrambler, and Scrambler, when he touches you, he can make your powers not work. Oh. Is that like Rogue being able to steal someone else's powers? So Scrambler touches Rogue. Okay. And they both get knocked out. Huh. I mean, that's funny. Which is great. Yeah. Is there someone who has sockets for Wolverine's claws? Right. Ha ha! I just have holes in my arms and... Yeah. <laughs> just, I got can't you use now. Them anymore. Yeah. No. No, Sabretooth is here. Oh, right. Obviously. So we got that. Purple tries to use his power on Storm. That's great. Yeah, she doesn't like, have powers. <laughs> I'm going to scramble your powers. Yep, she's like, oh, you asshole. I've got an ace up my sleeve. Wham! <laughs> it's awesome. Now... His power is to rob other people's other powers. Can he then fight? Uh, seemingly not, because... Because <laughs> he's just laid out by a punch. It's like, well, she was already an ordinary person, yeah. like everyone is when you take their powers. What was your next plan? Like, what was the next stage of your plan? I, I, I thought you'd be so overwhelmed by losing your powers that you would just pass out or something. <laughs> that happens sometimes. I run away. <laughs> yeah, I leave. I right. steal your power, and then I run to the back. <laughs> yeah, and then I move behind, like, Arclight or something. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Rogue is now depowered, so Harpoon's like, and now I'll finish her off by throwing a harpoon full of energy at her. Shadow Hat Cat jumps in the way, grabs Rogue to phase both of them so the harpoon would pass through them. And if it was just a normal harpoon, that would've worked. But it's an energy-infused harpoon, and so while it doesn't hurt Rogue, it does scramble Shadow Cat. And so sh now Shadow Cat can't turn off her phasing. Not so much that she falls through the earth and then goes through space forever, <laughs> but just enough so that she can't touch things or talk. Or be effective in the fight. Like, yes. And this won't be solved and will only get worse until Fantastic Four versus X-Men, a story we've already done. So, where Franklin Richards and Doctor Doom fix this problem. Right. 
so the energy, she's still able to phase Rogue so that she's not hit by the harpoon. Yes, it should have affected the, Rogue, the, but Rogue isn't inherently a phaser. Whatever. All that matters is we want this new status quo for, stat, for Shadow Cat where she's useless and not on the team anymore. Right, she's way OP. We gotta get her. We gotta, gotta get her off there. the table. I'm so, tired of these people email or uh, mailing me saying like, in the fight where blah, 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 why didn't Shadow Cat just, just blah, blah, blah. Like, no. How about she gets hit by an effing energy harpoon and she's now- and Now you don't have her and anymore. Now she's like a ghost. <laughs> it's that also, better? It's all, no, I hate it. <laughs> well, you're well, it's your fault. Yeah. So Blame while, yourself. While that happens, uh, Colossus fights Riptide and Riptide is like, ha ha, and then just like, grabs some shit and throws it out and murders some more Morlocks. Off panel, but Colossus is like, what the? He is so upset that he just grabs him and snaps his neck. Oh, shit. And then he turns to Harpoon and he's like, you're next, buddy. Which is a huge heel turn for Colossus, by the way. Wow. Holy one, crap. Yeah, one of the most like docile and innocent characters. Yeah, is like, he's so nice. He's, he's just so like, so no, you just you just murdered like eight people in front of me. I, that's exactly I, right. You're dying. And you're laughing about it. You're yeah. done. Snap. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. And now it could be also he's reeling because only a few years ago, you know, he uh, he cheated on Shadowcat with that alien chick, Zaji, and uh, he's still feeling pretty embarrassed about it. <laughs> Fortunately, he doesn't blast the walls. Blow. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna ruin the tunnels in New York City. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of infrastructure around I here. I came in the entire damn city. <laughs> well, thank God uh, Shadowcat also can't remind him of that because she can't talk anymore. That's true. It's close. I can't hear you with the sound of snapping that guy's neck. <laughs> scares the ever loving shit out of all the marauders who are still alive and they run away. <laughs> like, oh Jesus, they're killing us just like we're killing them. Yeah. That's horrible. Oh, no. That's not fair. <laughs> Meanwhile, Storm is like, this is this is gonna reflect poorly on my on my evaluation <laughs> as a leader of this team with no powers who insisted on still being the Evaluation by whom? But, yeah. Professor X isn't around. He, Who's gonna judge you? That's true. So she's like, I gotta okay, so X-Men load load all the Morlocks onto a train. Not that train. Oh no! It's a good train. It's a good train. For it's it's a happy camp. God damn it! Oh, uh, no, like, but it is a camp though. Well, it's on. It, thankfully, it's on Professor X's grounds. Can we use a different word, please? Uh, the mansion. Uh, uh, the sleep, compound. Sleepaway cottages. <laughs> so they go. Uh, so the, the, she's like, X Men, like lead the Morlocks back to the mansion where they can be, you know, tended to. Mm -hmm. And Wolverine, I need one living marauder. To, fun, to understand why they're doing this, huh. who who they're working for, and what's going on. I, one. I mean, <laughs> you have uh, Riptide who's dead. Can you like reanimate no. him or does <laughs> someone talk to the dead or something? No. Let's go find Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this body come from? Don't worry about Don't that. Worry about that. Why is his neck so grotesquely crushed? It's, look, I didn't ask you to find out why he died yeah. or why I his neck looks like that. I didn't know what he knew when he was alive. <laughs> Let's focus that's, that's on not what I do. the objective here. I think, what, what would you say you do do? One thing I don't do <laughs> is aid and abed felons who murder people. Well, but you clearly did. You. <laughs> I love Storm though, just going like, Wolverine, I need one marauder. Yeah. The rest are yours. I know what you do. Please do you it. The best I know you at can't it. be stopped. I'm amazed you haven't killed three of them yet. Yeah. yeah. How come, by the way? So the Marauders are like just just laying waste to more Morlocks in the Jeez. tunnels. X Factor goes into the tunnels to deal with it. They have their own fights with the Marauders. Sabretooth is now established as one of them. Sabretooth was established earlier in an Iron Fist comic in the 70s. And it's now being established as having been a member of the Marauders. And there is a heavy implication that he and Wolverine have a long history, which has never has existed before. Right. Oh, so this is the beginning of it. This is the beginning, or at least one of the most prominent beginnings of Wolverine and Sabretooth having a history and fighting. And Wolverine being like, oh no, it's Sabretooth. And you're going, what? Did I see that happen? Where, what book was that? There's no little note to tell me which book that happened Conveniently in. enough, there is no editorial note to tell me where <laughs> that happened in. That's pretty weird. Which I also really appreciate, because it's also like, yeah, no, like let's retcon in like that Wolverine has an arch nemesis, and it's freaking Sabretooth. Yeah, he's oh, he a, always did. He's a terrible Iron Fist villain, let's make him a Wolverine villain. Yeah. And that will be that. We have to get our... Sabretooth working. Yeah, and it does. It does immediately. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, the savagery of uh, Sabretooth matches perfectly with the tone of the Marauders. Right. So, I thought we were going to say the savagery of Wolverine. Oh, that's true, Well, yes. also that. Well, yeah, we, we transition from the savagery of the Marauders into him fighting Wolverine, who 
would kill him if he could. So that's cool. We're not gonna have time to talk about Candy, Warren Worthington III, Angel's girlfriend, <laughs> who is also like kind of like an unofficial hangout member of the X-Men. There's a subplot here where Freedom Force immediately recognizes X-Factor when they're dealing with them in Central Park. I mean, they're the Brotherhood of Mutants fighting the X-Men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, that's exactly right. Like Come Scott. on. Yeah, what the f <laughs> No. And so Mystique leaks to the press, because X Factor's also being funded by the wealthy aristocrat Warren Worthington the third, who is definitely not Angel. <laughs> and so Mystique leaks information to the press that, a that Warren Worthington the third is Angel and also funding oh. X Factor. Because Louis Simons is like, I'm killing this terrible premise. I'm so done with this. Yeah, I need to discredit it so they won't, no one can no one can become X Factor. Right. Like, it'll just be over. It's I'm like, ruining X Factor for everybody. Right. It's like you're killing your book. She's like, I'm writing Power Pack. It's fine, and I'll just inherit it. I'll just keep doing X Factor, and it'll just be a cool team. But anyway, right. we're just gonna change radically the concept because that name is gold. Yes. We're not getting rid of the name. That's right. That, that, mwah. So that's the only thing working. So Candy Southern, who is also Angel's girlfriend and a member of the press, is like, I gotta tell Angel before the shit hits the fan. Mm. So she sneaks down uh, to uh, to deal with that. Um, Wow, so we're outing Angel's identity in this book. Yes, we're also doing a little bit more to Angel as well because Angel, well, we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. Mm. Uh, Angel gets his ass kicked and so he's going back to uh, X Factor headquarters where he's being nursed back to health. Uh, of course, Angel also had a love triangle with Jean Grey and Cyclops in the early days, in the 60s. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. No, Cyclops and Angel both liked Marvel Girl. Okay. Uh, and so now that Cyclops is already technically married to Madeline Pryor, who is not here, right. and trying desperately to bang his ex-girlfriend Jean, Angel is back in the picture, kind of, but he's also with Candy. He's like, oh, damn it, she's damn available it. finally. Yes! Got this, this, this candy yes. anchor around my neck. Right, but I also like Candy, and Candy's cool. Right. So Angel and Jean are chatting it up at X Factor Industries or Enterprises or whatever. And they have kind of like a tender moment because like they're talking about Cyclops and how like, you know. And how much he sucks. What a piece of shit he is. But how sad it is that like they can't you believe be he's like constantly hitting on you while he's married to Madeline Pryor? How gross, Pryor? what a creep. No one should ever do that, <laughs> that'd be terrible. Yeah. So while he's like hugging Jean and consoling her, Candy arrives and Candy's response, I mean, maybe she's just tired of seeing the two of them like yeah. flirt or be tender with each other. Or maybe Candy's just looking for a reason to get out. Right. But she's like, what? It's over and just leaves. Do you know how annoying it is to deal with your molting all the time? <laughs> I get stabbed with feathers in my sleep. Yeah, exactly. So Thank he's like, God. So Jean's like, go after her. And he doesn't because like, well, I do kind of want to bang you. Though. Yeah, well, she's not wrong though. Yep, so. We're not wrong about what? 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 She's she, she is in a car on the way back home before that conversation could happen. Angel's like, I gotta jump in the tunnels and say Artie or or Rusty or. Yeah. Whatever. What about Rusty? Yeah, what about Rusty? So we gotta go deal with him. So he's like, I'm gonna go back in the tunnels, and he's also like sad. So he's going to team up with Gene and go do that. Meanwhile, Sabretooth is slaughtering more Morlocks Jesus. with Harpoon. When so the Morlocks are just, they have no ability to defend themselves. No. They just don't have any weapons or And their powers, powers are lame. And they also apparently can't escape the sewers. Yeah, just, 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 just get out. out. Run. Where are you going to go? I don't understand. Like, the like, service? I know, that's true. Well, I can't go there. I'm not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So well, I, I rejected that world. I won't go back. Oh, uh, yeah, no. The world, I'd rather die here. <laughs> you did not reject that world. The world rejected you long before you made that decision. I chose this No, life. no, no. This was my decision. Yeah, I feel like the choice was made for you. <laughs> This Plague. is like brutal oh. and horrible. It's hor yes. Jeez. And yet not a drop of blood. Yeah. It's just it's, well that visual blood. It's, yes, it's existentially but they are freaking dreadful. Dying. They're yeah. big time. It's slaughtering. It gets worse. So while while Sabretooth is trying to slaughter another Morlock named Plague, Harpoon's like, great, I'll you you set her up, I'll knock her down. And um, then what are Plague's powers? <laughs> she can make she can make you diseased. She's she's a Maybe human plague. Kill Plague. Yeah. She survives because Apocalypse shows up. <laughs> and Apocalypse like bonks Harpoon on the head and then goes, hey, Plague, your pestilence now. Come with me. Oh, what? That's good. That is good. Setting things up. Wow. So you're like, whoa, 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 what? We're setting things up. We got plans for Apocalypse and Horsemen? So hmm. Apocalypse leaves with Plague. 
Now yep. pestilence. That's a shame because that Apocalypse would be the one. Out. Yes, mutant you could just get rid of and be like, "Hey, no more disease from that person." Oh yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> so while the X Factor is in the tunnels attacking more marauders, we meet another uh, marauder whose name is Prism, I believe. Uh, Prism is essentially just a giant glass prism person. Is uh, that useful? Uh, no, because Jean shatters him to death. <laughs> I mean, it could have been before that. She's happened. like, "That's enough of you!" And I'm like, "Whoa! Oh, the X Men are killing uh, 200 percent more characters than they ever have before." <laughs> Don't you like this? Is yeah, this is what it? you want? It's it's '86. You like that Dark Knight Returns crap, right? <laughs> did you hear what the comedian almost did? Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. If you could shatter him that easily. Oh, I know. He like you would. They'd be walking around. They'd stub their toe and. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, how do you make it this long? <laughs> That's true. You're and you're in the sewers. This pipe's all over the place. You don't know. So Angel lags behind to go save Artie, and when he does, he is ambushed by a majority of the Marauders. Oh. Uh, where they grab him and they uh, harpoon his wings. They just stab oh. him in the wings and then essentially crucify him on the wall. With, by his wings. Right. Yikes. Using I mean, that's his identity. I get it. Exactly. Like y you guys have been killing us. And now I'm going to torture you. Yes, like, that's that's the plan. Until your friends stop. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Thor has a story. Let's not worry about it. Cool. <sighs> yeah, fine. Totally fine Thor with that. Thor has a whole story. He's so back. Weird. His dad's missing. Maybe dead. He's Sigmund right now. Someone he, calls him Spider-Man. He, yeah, he, well, he goes back to his old job site as Sigmund, but he's been Thor so long that like he doesn't know if he has it, but the foreman's his friend, so he goes to dinner with the foreman, <laughs> and then he hangs out with his parents. Uh, you've been a no-call no-show for like for three like months. months. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're fired. You're, you've been fired. How about some Asgardian gold? I don't know your Thor. What, where'd you get that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, Thor slash Sigmund is hanging out with the foreman's children in the park, but then some frogs show up and they tell him about the slaughtering in the Morlock tunnels, and so he springs in action and Thor's out. Do the kids hear this? What? No, they can't hear it because they were never frogs. But Thor was a frog because he was transformed into Throg by Loki in a previous story. Correct. So some residual, some part of the frog imprinted <laughs> on the Thor or copied. And so <laughs> Thor speaks frog Just, now. That's canon. Thor th speaks frog. Thor How do the frogs frog? know to tell Thor? Because they knew he was a frog. They're, They're like, like, oh, Whoa. you were Throg! The greatest, greatest of warrior! <laughs> You're a legend amongst frog kind. That's right. Whence will you transform into your former self? Yeah. When will you cast off your exactly. heretical appearance as a man? And, and be and the true fro <laughs> frog we believe you to be. Does that mean every time that <laughs> when Thor walks past a lake at he, night, uh, he, just hears, he just hears frogs being like, hey, hey, let's fuck. <laughs> hey, come on. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh my God, it's deafening. We also get their names. Oh yeah? The frogs. The frog names? Yeah. We're yeah. really doing the frog yeah. names? Puddle Gulp and Bug Eye. <laughs> They assign those they names to name themselves. themselves. God damn yeah. it! And I'm like, man, Puddle Gulp. That's a, that's a solid name. You must be like frog royalty or something like that. And that must be weird. Hey, you know what? Frog lifespans aren't very long. I can mm. imagine like the, his Puddle his Puddle Gulp, the 208th yeah, of this oh, pond. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Anyway, so he becomes Thor and he goes into the Morlock tunnels because we got Thor in this because Walt Simonson's working on this book and Walt Simonson is married to Louis Simonson and so you know we just keep it. In Let's get family. Thor in there. Yeah. Let's get Thor in there. And and, and it's going to be horrific because Hella. Queen of Hell, 1L, is also like, I want to mess with Thor. I got, I got plans for Thor. And it involves the Morlock tunnels. So Thor <laughs> oh, saves you know Angel. I'm, I have no dog in this or pony in this race, but I'm going to kill Morlocks anyway, just to piss no, off No, Hela Thor. does not kill Morlock. <laughs> okay. She doesn't that, care oh, about the Morlocks. That would be It's more all tragic. about Thor. Yeah. So Thor goes down in the tunnels. He beats the crap out of some of the Marauders and rescues Angel and delivers Angel to the rest of X-Factor. Mm. X-Factor is like, hey, Thor, we've never met. And he's like, you're the X-Men. Yeah, I know. We met back in like 1965. Really? Like the last time we teamed up was like wow. in the 60s, it's 86, but that was only like 20 years ago. But so still it was only like two years ago or oh, something? Yeah, book time? No. 20 years? It's more like, yeah. Yeah, more like two or three years. <laughs> so, sure. Also, Lou Simonson oh, is working on a Power Pack book. The Power Pack are a bunch of kids who have superpowers, and right now at this point, their powers are all swapped. They go to the Morlock tunnels, discover all these dead bodies, and have 
long-lasting trauma. But Wolverine Why? insists they leave. Why are the Power Pack, a group of kids, just going into the sewers? Well, because their parents they heard aren't about the there, problem. and they heard about the power. They're like, well, I want to help the Morlocks. Already ends up top, top side and bumps into the power, well, sneaks into the Power Pack's house, and then he tells them. I, I, or rather, he projects himself into the Power Pack's house. Doesn't it's matter. Like, Frankly, Rich is also a member of the Power Pack, or an honorary <laughs> member at this point, so, you know, p augmented power, doesn't matter. The right. point is, Artie is the reason why the Power Pack go to the Morlock tunnels. Right. And Artie finds the Power Pack and explains to them the ethnic cleansing that's occurring that's and exactly. the horrors that he's seen. <laughs> so they go and they help. There's a little kid like them. And uh, Wolverine's oh like, God. leave right now. You know, the power pack like finds some some of the friggin' marauders and just they like, murders them. Right, no, they, they do find the marauders and the marauders try to kill them and the children you know. have adorable wacky hijinks with them until eventually they leave. Do they come across the corpse of Riptide and just be like, oh God, his neck! <laughs> no, Riptide's done. <laughs> Who did this? And, and soon no one will find their corpse of Riptide and we'll talk about that in a minute as Thor like starts fighting more of the marauders. One of the marauders like punches Thor in the arm and he breaks his arm. And Thor's like, that should never happen. What the absolute hell? What happens is Hela has enchanted Thor with brittle bones. Oh. So now he, can, he can't die, but he can break. <laughs> and so that's your problem now. Right. And, and you'll beg for death before the end. Oh. And then she I, says that? And maybe I'll deliver you from it, you piece of shit. And Thor's like, damn it. And so after Thor, they realized that was a curse you could lay upon him. Oh yeah, yeah. well she is queen of hell. So <laughs> I've also cursed you with boots that are too tight. <laughs> Damn it! So and your hammer does like minus five damage <laughs> compared to what it previously did. Yeah. Also, every every twentieth uh, word you bite your tongue. Yeah. Oh god. No. And you stub your toe at every right before you get to bed. <laughs> So Thor delivers Angel to X Factor and they leave. And then Hela makes fun of Thor. Thor is so angry by this circumstance mm -hmm. that he conjures as guardian fire that blasts through the Morlock tunnels, incinerating every body of every last Morlock and endangers the lives of everyone in the crossover. What? Exit Thor from the story. Uh so he could have potentially murdered everyone, hundreds of people. He, he yes, if if the mutant massacre had not occurred, and Thor was just in the tunnels and still had the same circumstances that caused his broken arm, and Hela gave him the same speech, he would have murdered everyone in the tunnels. Can we just wow. say weird, hypothetically, <laughs> that there's a very good chance that there are a decent amount of Morlocks that died because he lit them on fire? Yeah, we can say that. Okay. Th that's definitely that's possible. That is canon. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Thor almost kills every... The rest of the book is essentially them going like, ah! and then running away from the fire. Why is that a power he has? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Does Thor he ever can, use it again? I've never seen it. Maybe Hela cursed him and he tried to call down lightning and fire right. happened. Instead, he's like, oh shit, oh shit, I gotta go. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I mean the you, fire could be just lightning. never seen him that mad before, right? I mean, he broke his arm. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, and she made fun of him, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, like... What? Yeah. I'll fucking kill you, yeah. bitch. I'm an, I'm an immortal god, <laughs> and you dared to tell me I couldn't go where I want or do what I want. I'll kill everyone. <laughs> I'll kill, I'll burn this whole planet. What a hero. Uh, meanwhile, at like the triage that is the X-Mansion, it's just overloaded with like Morlocks, oh, and also X-Men, like Nightcrawler's in a coma, and uh, Colossus is hurt. But he's still metal, but he's like, he's been damaged. And this is when Magneto shows up and he's like, okay, so like, you're not like metal. You know, it's like a mutant metal that like makes your skin. Yeah, because I can like control you. Exactly, well, no, I can control you, but it's like no. different. It's so not, it is like metal. It is like metal. It's magnetic, uh, but it's not full metal. It's weird, it's just, it's different. And I've noticed that like, you're not bleeding, but you're leaking energy because of your like state. That's like, good. okay. It's not oil or anything. No, he's not a <laughs> robot. So. Magneto's like, I'll, I know, I'll use my metal, my metal manipulation ability to like heal you. Essentially. Yeah, right. Fix I'll essentially the take broken. the dents out. Yes. Yeah. So he does, and he is healed from the cosmetic injuries, and ends up a quadriplegic. What? Yeah. Magneto just paralyzes Colossus yeah. because he doesn't Let know just, what he's doing. Uh, oops. 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 Oh, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> oh, this is real bad. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> it's just like, don't do that. Don't mess around with shit you don't know. It's like, hey, look at that circuit board from a thing I don't have any prior experience with. Well, I know if I just solder this. Oops, I just destroyed the entire thing. 
No, you need an electrical engineering degree, asshole. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, gotta, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Well, let me just get out of here. I thought electronics was way simpler than it turns out it is. Yeah. I thought you guys were just milking everybody for money and yeah. you know, didn't, you know, jerking so, off for like three years at school. On, I got my face. Yeah. I'll tell you that. I'm wrong. Sorry. You know what? My bad. I am a big enough person that I can admit <laughs> when I'm wrong. So Colossus is off the table too. Yeah. Wow. In fact, almost every man on the team is off the table. So meanwhile, <laughs> uh, Wolverine bumps into Sabretooth, who's going to murder Healer, who's a member of the Morlocks, who would would have been really useful about an hour ago. <laughs> and uh, so... No, they'd have to be alive to be healed. That's true. How did they suffer the, the survive the the flame carnage? It's still coming. It's on its way. Oh, I see. That happened. Well, and right. they, like, seal doors. God, you know, because it's like, right. it, you know, it's not just... They're, they're not like the Ninja Turtles where they just live in open pipes. Like, they have... Right, it's doors. structure. Yeah. And, yeah. So, Sabretooth and Wolverine have an awesome epic fight. And while that's happening, Storm is like, I have completely failed. Yes. So she like runs away, oh. and then she bumps into Callisto, who's like, "Yeah, you did." <laughs> and so they have a big fight, and then ultimately, you know, Callisto bequeaths her leadership vest to Storm, and Storm Doesn't dons Callisto the vest. has powers though. Yeah, yeah, but they're useless. Well, also, Storm doesn't, so she doesn't use them. So that wouldn't be fair. Yeah, they're honor. This they're is honor like an, uh, yeah, this is like a ceremonial fight. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess. Well, and Storm's like will is broken. You know, she's just like, I have nothing left. I can't possibly do more. And Callisto's like, find it. Ah! You know. I mean, Callisto also failed because you were their leader and you couldn't save them. Yeah. It's you kind of failed more than Storm. What's responsibility does Storm have to help you? Well, well, she, you're the true rightful leader of the Morlocks by vest right. Well, now she is, but she, she just got close. the vest. No, 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 no. No, I mean, uh, no, she got the vest when she defeated Callisto the first time. Oh, this is a second fight. Yeah, that that first fight was. Oh, yeah, was different. Was, I thought you, I thought we were now seeing the fight no, that you talked about before. No, no, no. This oh. is this is the second round where both leaders of the Morlocks have failed and have their spirits broken. But Kalista's like, you're gonna have to rally because you are by battle right the true leader of the Morlocks. So like, I I can't. I can't s truly deliver them from their annihilation. But if we're tussling right now and I win, right, do I become the warlock leader again? Right, I, I don't know. Yeah, but, but but I don't understand, Callisto has the vest. Yes, well, because well, <clears throat> Storm bequeathed it back to Callisto. Oh, you know, when? Be, when they first had their fight, because oh. like Storm donned the vest, but then she's like, but you're gonna lead the Morlocks for me, so you're gonna wear the vest. Oh, I see, she didn't keep the vest. No. Okay. No. But it was given to her ceremoniously. Yes, that's right. true, and then Callisto's like, here, you go. Now I'll put it on again. That's right. what she does. Now actually put it on though because you need to directly lead them because I failed. That's right. And while <laughs> that happens, fault, though. Yeah, Wolverine fights Sabretooth and essentially Wolverine realizes like I can't fight this guy to the death when this is guy's life on the line. So he caves in the, the, the ceiling on Sabretooth and Sabretooth yeah. is like we're going to fight again. And he's like yeah but not today. Hmm. And then he takes Healer and he leaves. So that was a good choice. It's a good, cool move. Yeah, like, he chose right. to save somebody rather than like keeping the fight going. It's exactly. Like, this life is on the line here. You can't just screw around with saber Yeah, which is actually a thing that Wolverine will later do. But for now, these people, Simonson and Claremont and company, are like, Wolverine is a character I care about and want to preserve and use. Right. He's not yeah, an he's, asshole. He's going to be a clear-headed guy for right now. Exactly. Yeah. He's a hero. So the Daredevil story is just Daredevil fights Sabretooth in the tunnels. Tunnels. Okay. That's it. Uh, it's also weird because Sabretooth... So t Sabretooth fights Wolverine. What? The ceiling caves Why in. Why does Daredevil even show up? Because uh, Sabretooth takes a woman and Daredevil goes to save her. But, but okay. while that's happening, Sabretooth is also attacking the mansion. So I what? think that this... While it does take place in the chronology of the book and in the printing of the book before Sabretooth attacks the mansion... I think it takes place after everything. Mm. Like I want to toss out the theory that Sabretooth and Daredevil fight after that because essentially what happens is after the fire has expunged and the Morlocks are no more and so too are the Marauders, Sabretooth is kind of like, well, now what do I do? And so he just kind of like takes refuge in the Morlock tunnels. Mm. Like he's like, oh, well, now I'm just going to live here like an urban legend <laughs> and fight Daredevil sometimes. And well, so, he's waiting for Wolverine to come back so they can finish their fight. Exactly, but instead he fights... Daredevil, and we also like parallel that with a story about a kid and a cat, and it's just supposed to like parallel, you know, the the the, the pathos of Sabretooth, whatever. But uh, I'm gonna say that it takes place afterwards, even okay. though I'm sure there's gonna be somebody angrily in the comments be like, "There's no possible way that it could take place." No, what happens is Sabretooth fights Wolverine 
as a member of the Marauders. He then gets separated from Wolverine. Then he goes and establishes a base in the Morlock Tunnels, fights Daredevil, doesn't kill the woman that he kidnapped, and then gets in a hair up his ass to go attack the mansion with reckless abandon. Sure. Sabretooth attacks the mansion, and the only one who's around is Psylocke. Mm. And Psylocke's like, I'm going to distract Sabretooth from killing anyone who's here and bedridden, mm -hmm. and hopefully save time enough for someone else to like stop Sabretooth from killing me and anyone else here. Mm -hmm. And so she holds her own by virtue of like running and throwing things at Sabretooth until eventually uh, Sabretooth catches up to her and then Wolverine arrives. Mm. And we get this is not two. where we get the totality of her psychic ability? No, no, she does wield a knife, but it's a, it's a regular one. Uh, this would have been fantastic when she's like cornered and she like stabs him yeah, for the first time. Yeah, no, but there is going to be a round two between Psylocke and Sabretooth, but not until Psylocke becomes Asian. Uh, <laughs> so then uh, Wolverine and Sabretooth fight and uh, they eventually fight off of a cliff and into some water and then Wolverine's the only one who makes it out of there. Uh, meanwhile, That's convenient. the X-Men are like, hey, Psylocke, like, you, you like, took a beating. Like, she gets her arm sliced by Sabretooth's claws and stuff. Ooh. And uh, by the way, Alan Davis draws an awesome fight between Sabretooth and Wolverine. But uh, eventually, they accept Psylocke into the group. They're like, you held your own, you protected the team, you remember the X-Men. Why are they murdering the Morlocks? Right. Right. This book is almost over, and we have no idea what caused it. For the most part, the Marauders succeeded in murdering the Morlocks. Uh, and, and Thor and, finished off the rest. And Thor finished <laughs> off the rest and their base. And we've also firmly established that Wolverine and Sabretooth are awesome characters that we want to see fight all the time. Uh, also, Colossus is off the table, Nightcrawler is off the table, and the team of X-Men... Kitty X Pride's off the table? Kitty's off the table, too. Right. The Rogue is off the table. No, 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 no. Rogue was depowered by the other guy, but... Only temporary. Only temporary. Oh, okay. It was only temporary. She's back. Uh, and so the X-Men are Psylocke, Storm, Rogue, and Wolverine. <laughs> Wolverine's like, finally. <laughs> now we just gotta find Jean. I know she's alive, so let's go get her. <laughs> this is awesome. Why are the Marauders trying to kill yeah. the Morlocks? Yeah, well, we got 10 pages left. We might as well get an answer. Yeah, well, uh, no, the 10 pages are actually just like, also, Malice was, was trying to ruin the career of Dazzler. And oh, so yeah. uh, the X Men get a call about, about it because Lila Cheney knows the X Men's phone number. Never mind the Holocaust that just happened. Hey, we gotta save Dazzler's career. <laughs> well, we can't. It's over. Oh, oh but, no. We gotta be sad about Dazzler's career being ruined. Well, don't worry about what it. What about like, all those Morlocks? Who? What? Yeah. Well, what's a Morlock? Jeez, that sounds stupid. <laughs> you mean from the from the book? Yeah. From the Time Machine book? You mean those mole people? No. What? That's not real, man. Yeah, that's not real, and that's not the same character. <laughs> No, those are Moloids. So, those are Moloids. Sound exactly the same. It sounds, to me. It sounds the same to me. I don't know the difference. So, <laughs> ugly, live underground, can't come to the surface. Right. So the X Men go to Texas and they team up with. Uh, well, they they go to to battle Malice. Malice, of course, jumps into different bodies. She jumps into all the X Men's bodies and like hmm. you know ruins their day. They're in Texas. They yep. leave New York. Yeah. And the yeah. massacre that's going on. No, it's over. Oh, it's the over. It's over. over. They, they're, they, they're all dead. Yeah. The, most of the of the Marauders are dead anyway or ran away. Yeah, it's over. The idea was, and they, they reveal that their leader is a guy named Mr. Sinister. Oh. Establishing Mr. Sinister for the first time. He's not, oh. He doesn't appear in the book. But, so the idea was that Mr. Sinister formed the Marauders to kill the Morlocks. And what will be a later retcon to establish the motivation is that Dark Beast from the Age of Apocalypse travel back in time to this reality. Okay. And then with the help of Sinister and his technology, made the Morlocks. That the Morlocks are different. <laughs> but that wasn't, that what, what, wasn't that established wasn't, here. No, no, no. No, no but as far as we're concerned but, here in the right future, now, Mr. Sinister right now in this book, one of the Morlocks dead. So why? Because Because he Dark made them. Beast, and if he made them, I can take them out of this world that's too. That's right, well, because yeah. Dark Beast took my shit and made stuff that I don't like or agree with, and I'm so, I, so I need to clean up my mistakes. So, so <laughs> I literally thought it was just because like, exist. oh, it's Mr. Sinister. 
Because they're genetically inferior. That's what I now was that's, thinking. That's Apocalypse's bag. Oh. Mr. Sinister messes with genetics, with genetics, but he but doesn't, doesn't care about who's Darwinianly yeah, not, more powerful. He's not into eugenics. No. He, well, so he's not of, a Nazi. No. I would say that Mr. Sinister is technically not a Nazi. Right. But... He does want to create a more perfect he, he's, being, but he doesn't need to kill the other ones. And, and perfect to him, it's not like he's like, I'm going to make a master race. He's more right. like, I just think that y- the genetics of the Summers is especially neat. And I'm just I'm just preoccupied by that all the time. So <laughs> anyway, Mr. Sinister's like, I'm cleaning up the Dark Beast mess. of I didn't, I didn't sanction the Morlocks. That's right. gross and weird. So I need a team. <laughs> hey, Gambit, member of the Thieves Guild. Make me a team of villainous mutants and then send them into the tunnels to kill the Morlocks. What? Gambit made the Marauders. <laughs> yes. That's also That's a retcon. That's a retcon, but But yes. it did happen. But it did happen. And don't tell me it didn't happen. I saw it happen. Right. I watched it happen. And wow. So, so he has this like... This, this massacre on his hands. There is actually... Now Gambit did end up going with the Marauders to the tunnels. Oh, but, but then he chickened out. when he found out about the ma- that it was going to be like a straight up massacre. He's just like, I want to take part in this. He tried to stop them by oh, his butt okay. kick. I thought then, we meant cleaning up, like we were going to wash them or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was gonna be like a devil mission. We were like, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. We're missionaries. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Oh, oh, it's, it, uh, yeah. It's I'm genocide. Sure, I'm sure Mr. Sinister was like, I just need a team that's like super capable right. for a mission. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just, just, and they're gonna need to go into these tunnels and, and do yeah. some stuff. And so the retcon is that he's cleaning up from Dark Beast. What yes. is the rationale? Well, he's rationale? cleaning up the mess that Dark Beast made right. Right. for Mister Sinister. Yeah, but what's the rationale for this book? Is he? Oh, Mister Sinister doesn't want the Morlocks around. It's just, he's just a bad guy. His yeah. name is Mister Sinister. He yeah. doesn't need a reason well, to he's murder got plans. Morlocks. He's got plans that also involve establishing that Madeline Pryor is actually the clone that I made. Right, but the, do they involve the Morlocks being dead? Oh, it's just it's step one that of just, my master uh, uh, But, but, but he what? Want just the tunnels of New York City to himself? No, no. He just wants the Morlocks off the table because they th- pose a threat it's, to him in some way. Maybe I don't know. You'll never. You'll, I'll never tell. <laughs> I guess it is. He's a Nazi. He just finds them gross. He's gonna well, run. Maybe them. there's sure, no explanation, yeah. and I guess there never is. But there until, is an establishment until they make one. Until they make one, yeah. Maybe that's one of those uh, things they were like, you know, we never really established why Mr. Sinister didn't like the Morlock so much. How and long? one person was like, he's Mr. Sinister. Why do we need a motivation? About <laughs> yeah. ten years. <laughs> it takes him ten years to figure out why Mr. Sinister wanted to yeah. kill the Morlock. Eighty-six to ninety-six. Yeah, I think so. That that's that's almost unforgivable. <laughs> you have this oh, I know. square gambit for that. I mean, people are not the deeds they've. Done. Well, he didn't I don't know, know what was going to happen. The, the, the way they, the way he's they a member tried. of the thieves' guild. He does bad stuff. Gambit didn't know it was yeah, going to be he that reformed. bad. Yes. Yeah, the but not that, until later. He, if he reformed, it implies he did bad stuff. And I think this that, was one of them. This is a forgivable act yeah, because but, Gambit didn't know how the extent of his actions and tried to make up for them. Right. But he lied. Right, he didn't tell. And people. Professor X let that be a lie the entire time. <laughs> Professor X is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- hey, when Gambit. this comes out, this is going to be good. Gambit. <laughs> Someone needs to pick up my dry cleaning. Uh, it's not the place that's all across town, is it? Ah. Uh, it wasn't, but now it is. <laughs> there are new powers. With the, with, nope. with the Krakoan protocols, like we assume that we've been churning out Morlocks the whole damn time. <laughs> right. Yeah, took that, a long time to get good clones. We have a lot of Morlocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I can imagine being a Morlock. I mean, like, because the other thing is with Krakoan Resurrection, it's like you could request changes made. I got a mole. I don't want it anymore. Or, you know, I, I got a club foot. It's like, oh, okay. Or I don't want the memory of my third relationship. Oh, okay, <laughs> no problem. We'll just cut that right out. So it's like every Morlock that comes back to life is like, Hey, um, did you have to make it one to one? Could I just not be a <laughs> warlock anymore right? this like, time? Could I, if, if let's say we mm. ended the Krakoan age, could it not be easily seamless for me to just go back to the tunnels? Like, could I just like go get a job? Nah, it doesn't work that way. I feel like it does. Here's the thing: How can we no. have a class of society if there's no one below me? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, when this is all done, of course. Oh so yes, anyway, of course. 
Mutant Massacre, it's in the comments down below if you want to get a copy. But yes, it is a... Uh, okay. it's, it's really it's objectionable. Only, it's only a mess because of all the context. Yeah, but it's Not like, only that, but it's also a mess because of everything that happens in the freaking books. Oh, I'm not, Why well, does Thor show up? Why well, is Daredevil there? Nah, because they, they kind of lost the thread partway through. The new through. mutants They're are like, also there, too. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah. No, Something about Power Warlocks. Pack shows up. Yeah, it's just kind of... Uh, yeah, we got to tie our things yeah. together, right? That's right. fun. Well, it's, it's the first X-Men inner title crossover. Like, this is the first X-Men crossover ever. Right. So well, we don't really know what we're doing. We don't know. You it's know? my first day. Yeah, it is their first day doing it, and like it would be cleaner if there was a title that all could happen underneath, but it is an opportunity for them to really make the X titles more incestuous, where it's like, oh, yeah. oh yeah. something that happens in New Mutants could really affect what happens in Uncanny X-Men, which would affect X-Factor, or we set up another book. Right, or well, another everyone knows books. who everyone is now. We got rid of all that, well, who's the X-Factor yeah, thing? That's you know, gone. That's gone. They're all just be. friends, and they could just show up in each other's books yes. at a time. Or, or trade teams, or just be cameos in each other's books. <laughs> well, that was certainly worth grotesquely murdering like hundreds or thousands of people yeah. for no reason Absolutely. with no motive yeah. all for the you know amazing story yes. that we got and, yes. the, and the epic you know moral tale of of the hazard of allowing ethnic cleansing because of course you know Mr. Sinister could be anyone yes that's true right yeah sometimes yeah. these characters who are you know, people you've never heard of mm -hmm. come from nowhere and just order ethnic cleansings that's, and that just happens yeah. and that's just the I mean, way the be world aware, is. You know, just read the signs, you know? Like, that legit aware. happened in the beginning of the book where Kitty Pride had to talk people down. That's right. No, we have like multiple moments where it's like, hey, listen, being racist is bad. Yeah, but that's not what happened to the Morlocks. No. The Morlocks, the Morlocks were killed by targeted. a racist mob. If they were, I'd be like, that's a lesson. Right, if, if, well, <laughs> if everything that happened to the X-Men rallied these people into going to the tunnels. Yes. And being like, be well, like, I can't, I can't kill Cyclops. Aren't, but right. I can kill, I can kill these freaking Morlocks, though. That's a story. <laughs> aren't, yes. aren't the Marauders technically themselves a racist mob? Yes, yes they, but, but except no, but they're because also mutants. there's no indication that they think Morlocks are like Inferior. below them. No, they're, they're just, just doing a job. Yeah, they're, they're assassins. For no reason. It's so weird. Yeah, they're carrying, well, no. If you want Maybe to carry it so over, they can they're kill. following orders. Well, <laughs> yeah, but who, why were the orders given? Because Mr. Sinister wanted them dead. <laughs> did you order the code red? <laughs> You're goddamn right I did. It's pretty grotesque for me to it's, it's, to do something that's so like shocking and horrible and to have no purpose or point yeah. or message. Well, especially no, like kind. at the end of it, where you are like, oh, it was Sinister. They don't know. You're absolutely right. Yeah, because it's just to make Mr. Sinister be a bad guy. Yes. Like, well, why is he a bad guy? Well, he did kill the Morlocks. Yes. And <laughs> we just saw this awesome team of badasses that let that, that brought that went toe to toe with Thor. X Factor and X Men, and I guess the New Mutants too, and so that's a really cool, really high stake situation we got there. Yeah, don't want you to see more of them. And they take orders from somebody else. Mm. Well, who's that all about? But also the problem is they were just kind of trying things out. Louis Simonson is on record saying this sucks and she hates it. She hated doing it. She hated dealing with it. It was a mess. Understandable. It was so successful. The, the Marvel powers were basically like we're gonna do this every year <laughs> regardless of whether you have a story or not like you're just gonna have to make something happen just just have another group of people just get murdered by someone uh, for no reason they, they were just like do it doesn't, it. i don't care what the what the story is right. no, just so long as but it affects everybody that, like yes yes i want yep. i want Bring consequences i want stakes and i want all the titles to link to one story of course because mm. then people have to buy all the yeah, books. Yeah, it oh, sold yeah. like crazy. And yep. it helped bolster some other titles. I'm sure Power Pack never sold better. Oh yeah. But like, yeah, we're, let's let's get some let's get some sales. But in isn't there. that the true crime? <laughs> it's the Power Pack. I like Power Pack. Power Pack is a cute book that is kind of an issue because how do you square the circle of a bunch of like eight and nine year old superheroes running around the streets of Manhattan fighting people who are ostensibly murderers and thieves. It's an issue, especially when like they bump into Spider-Man and he's like, hey, you need to go home. It's like, it can't be fun, but also you can't not let it be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Oh, but anyway, uh, Malice jumps into all the bodies of the X-Men. Yeah, they yeah. humiliate and torture them. And then eventually she jumps into Storm. She's like, now I'm a god. And Storm's like, lucky break for you, dipshit. And then uses her sheer force of will to just force Malice out of her. Oh. And then Malice conveniently jumps into a cop and then disappears. Because she's so cool and we want to use her again. 
but yeah, that's that's the that's the true ending to the story. Is that like hmm. Storm? You know, her confidence is shaken because she let genocide happen under her watch, under two different auspices of leadership, by the way. Yeah, and uh, and, and and then eventually she does get a fight, but, but none of the X Men are killed. No. But she is also the leader of the Morlocks. Yeah. And b none of the X-Men are killed. But, oh, I forgot. They sent Angel to the hospital. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, he, right, his wings! His wings get gangrenous and they have to be removed. What? And then he meets a man named Apocalypse. Apocalypse is recruiting. We're setting that up. Oh. I got, I got my pestilence. Yeah. But yeah, Nightcrawler's off the board for now. He'll be back. Uh, Colossus is off the board for now. He'll be back. Uh, Angel is off the board. He'll be back, but he won't be Angel again for a while. So there you have it, Mutant Massacre. Yes, I agree. It's uh, gratuitous without it ever really visually displaying the horrors that it implies, but uh, that's almost worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, it gets swept under the rug. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the consequences are long lasting and enduring. They will, you know, be felt for years to come. Sabretooth as Wolverine's arch nemesis at all. Like all this stuff. Yeah, the lasts. consequences of everything except the massacre itself. That's true. Which is <laughs> lost Which is to almost history. the worst thing, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Artie uh, I'm sure tells it every Saturday. Artie's just projecting a disgusting mural every day on the wall. Never forget the Morlocks and just being like, Artie. People are like, Artie, it's, it, all your crazy stories. Does it, get over Psylocke, it, Psylocke, uh, welcome to the X-Men. Your first order of business is to remove the memory of the Morlock massacre from his mind. I'm so tired of seeing I'm it. sorry, how am I supposed to do that? I have a psychic knife. No, 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 you don't yet, so you can. <laughs> you just use work. your psychic powers. Yeah. Maybe that's Chuck how she can do it. it. She's like, well, it's kind of like surgery, so maybe I'll, <laughs> oh, I've killed him. <laughs> oh, well. Oh wait, I'm not a doctor, I don't know how to do that. That's fine. Oh, I should have learned that lesson from Magneto. Yeah. <laughs> what happens to, to, to Colossus? They how fix does he him. Become not a he just gets better. He just gets it, better. It gradually. He just heals. He heals. I guess because he has a healing factor because everyone has a little bit they of a healing factor. They all do, yeah. If you get powers, you get a healing factor. In the Marvel Universe. <laughs> so. There you have it, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. Everyone has a healing factor except for Charles Xavier. Yeah. Well, no, he, he almost has a harder healing factor because, like, he's always walking. <laughs> you know, for a guy yeah, who's known it's for like having a wheelchair, he's walking sometimes. all the time. That's the savage land. Did you guys see Giancarlo Esposito was saying, like, I want to be Charles Xavier. I really want to be Professor X in the MCU, all this stuff. And then follows it up by being like, but I don't want to be in the wheelchair. What? <laughs> and everyone's like, so you don't want to be Charles Xavier, is what you're saying. Uh, that yeah. is not what I said at all. I said I want to be Charles Xavier. But I also don't want to be confined to a chair. Walking yeah. around. Yes. In and my like, favorite books, he's walking. I, I, I'm talking about the ones where he's walking around. Yeah. That, 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 that's why I like him. Oh, sure. why I want to be him. Yeah. So you want to be... I guarantee you don't name it. Name one story where he's walking around. Uh. Yeah. <laughs>